Minimally invasive, we call it, it is still invasive, but it's just less than. And why it's minimal? Because conventional open heart surgery is that if you feel your breastbone on the front, it is, uh, depending on the patient's height, it could be long or shorter, but anywhere from 6 inches to 12 inches, it could be long. So we have to split that bone open. And if you imagine, your bone is about this wide, the two fingers together. And when we divide it, it becomes like this. And then we put it back together. So all those risks of breaking it and all those are there. If people get infected with the sternum, it has a much higher risk from dying from the surgery compared to, as usually people say that if your risk of dying from heart surgery was 1% and your sternum and mediastinum got infected, it'll multiply that by 10. So it's a high risk. Minimally invasive, what it does, that you don't do anything to the sternum. For the bypass surgery or tricuspid valve surgery, you just make incision on the left side. I'm sorry, not the tricuspid, pulmonary valve. So for the pulmonary valve and uh, bypass surgery, left ventricular aneurysm, you just make a small incision in the left chest, fourth intercostal space. Some people may have to go lower. But you just go through the rib. You don't cut the rib. You don't break the rib. You just go in between the rib, about two and a half to three inch incision. And you do this entire surgery through that. For the valves, for the mitral valve, you will mitral valve, tricuspid, you will go through the fourth intercostal space on the right side, below the breast. For the aortic valve, you make incision up. If you're going to do multiple valves, you make the incision a bit lower. But you don't break the breastbone. You don't break the breastbone for the valve surgery, aortic valve surgery. For the mitral valve tricuspid, just like on the left side, you don't break the bone. You don't even break the rib or cut the rib. For the aortic valve, because it's so close to the sternum, you cannot split the bone. If you put a retractor in it, these high ribs, they don't have a much play. So you have to separate the third rib from the sternum and then you put it back together at the end of the surgery. But again, it's a two to three inch incision and uh, you block the nerves, intercostal nerves, and uh, with a cryoablation. And these people, a uh, lot of these people, almost have no pain. They don't ask for pain medications. They are not even taking pain pills by the time they leave hospital. I also heard that from your patients, that most of them were not taking pain medication. No. So that is the huge thing, because I have not seen a patient, mostly when you do the thoracic surgery, going through the ribs, old, I have done the lung surgeries, or old time when we were doing, minimally invasive at UCLA, uh, going through the ribs and all that. The patient become lopsided or they are favoring that arm or that side or they are not moving and they are moving a little lopsided, they are not lifting their arm. So now with no pain, and I start their exercises after the surgery, they can lift their arms and it should be equal, 10 time morning, 10 in the afternoon. That's so, amazing.